Welcome to the Weather Insights Tropical Briefing. This is Saturday, September 28th. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney with meteorologist Jeff Linder. And uh, yeah, as, as Jeff just said, welcome to the new August. This is uh, getting very close to October, end of September here, and, and we're very active in the tropics. Let's start off with the one furthest right. That's disturbance number one, now with a 60% chance of development over the next seven days, 20% in the next 48 hours. And we have Tropical Storm, or yeah, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, Tropical Storm Joyce now with winds at 50 miles per hour with a movement of northwest at 10 miles per hour. And then um, disturbance number two, of course, that's the one that we're going to pay be paying most attention to in the next week or so. Now, 40% chance of development in the next seven days. And then we have Isaac. It's picked up a little intensity. Now winds at 105 miles per hour, but Isaac continues to move off to the northeast at 20 miles per hour, just affecting shipping lanes. And then we have post-tropical cyclone Helene still spinning there in the Kentucky, Indiana, Illinois area, just bringing rain. So with all of these systems out there, as you would expect, the satellite looks pretty active. We have another um, wave uh, coming off the coast of Africa there. And uh, way up at the top, you can see just the bottom tip of Isaac and then uh, Tropical Storm Joyce. But uh, over in the Eastern Caribbean, that you can see that area, that's the area that as it moves west into the Western Caribbean, National Hurricane Center giving it a 40% chance of development. And uh, kind of like what we've seen with uh, previous storms, Jeff, without an eye, a lot of uncertainty right now with um, the uh, direction and intensity. Yeah, so, you know, a lot going on. Uh, interestingly enough, here's Joyce, kind of a another sheer tropical storm, probably not going to do a whole lot. This wave back here will have to be Keep an eye on this could become a really big hurricane out here in the Atlantic if if some of the models are right. And yeah, like you mentioned, Isaac, you can see the eye, pretty well-defined eye of Isaac, way up yeah. at 40 north. So I guess we're finally realizing these warm sea surface temperatures across the Atlantic, way up at 40 north. You get a, a category two hurricane, not totally unheard of, has happened before. But this is eventually going to be the area. Again, this area is very favored as you get into October, early part of October. The Western Caribbean, the Southern Gulf of Mexico for tropical cyclone formation. And this is, again, we're talking a week out now. So again, the best course of action is to look at the ensembles uh, approach to this and not so much the deterministic models. You know, the GFS the last couple of days has been showing some really scary stuff right. uh, down here in the Southwestern Gulf of Mexico. It's finally backed off on that. This is very typical of those deterministic runs, you know, they can show a big hurricane one run and barely a tropical depression the next run, totally different locations of where they may go. So it's best to stick with the ensembles at, at this range. And this is the European ensembles for next Thursday, October the 3rd. And you can see that it, it shows areas down here in the Western Caribbean or in the Southwestern Gulf mm -hmm. of Mexico for development. It, it might be competing here um the other the other guidance isn't as far west if you will with development here in the western gulf southwestern gulf uh either way this does not look like a a texas threat at the moment you know we have high pressure building down probably another front coming down and it, it really worked to the point in the time of the year where the fall pattern i mean it was what i don't know 62 63 57 this morning in Caldwell yeah I mean it's it's getting to the time of year here in Texas where the upper pattern is very fall like and so that means westerly winds steering winds aloft to be very difficult to get a tropical system into the northwest gulf in this pattern so this type of development and pattern favors Louisiana over to unfortunately Florida again yeah. wow. or if something were to develop way down here in the Bay of Campeche um, maybe kind of getting stuck and going into Mexico so there's there's kind of two options on the table now um, this is the GFS uh, ensembles for the same time next Thursday. It favors more the Western Caribbean kind of development, and I'm leaning in that direction um, and not so much the Southern Gulf, although you got to be careful with a front coming down like this yeah. and the northerly winds. It can kind of help maybe spin up a little bit of, of low pressure here. We saw this, I believe, what was it, with Francine mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago. And so mm -hmm. you got to kind of watch this area, but it's – the biggest thing I'm seeing this morning, yes, we're probably going to see something formed on here, but I'm not seeing the signals 
like we saw with Helene of being a big hurricane coming up toward the U.S. Gulf Coast. And so, yes, we'll probably get something to develop down here middle, late next week into next weekend. Yes, it could come up and, and impact areas here from Louisiana over to Florida. Um, but at the moment, we're not seeing the big red flags of high-end intensity like we were seeing with Helene at this, at this range. Um, interestingly enough, the Atlantic looks very active in late next week. These, these are not the systems. This would be the system coming off Africa now, and then another one comes off right behind it. So uh, we're starting to make up on our numbers here, uh, potentially you know, two or three more named storms uh, over the next week or so um, going into the first week of August, which would uh, start pushing us up towards that 1314 name storm number. Again, this year is a, a really good example of why we shouldn't really focus on the numbers uh, as much as the impacts. We've had four hurricanes now strike the U.S. Gulf Coast. We had Beryl, uh, Francine, Debbie, and then Helene. I mean, it's been an incredibly active year in the Gulf of Mexico. Actually, the record from 1886 is six hurricanes. So, wow. you know, if we get another hurricane coming up out of the Caribbean yeah. and impacting the Gulf Coast next weekend, we're within one of the most number of hurricanes to ever strike the Gulf Coast in a season. So regardless of the numbers, you know, we're, we're likely not going to reach 20 or 24 named storms, but it's been incredibly active. And, and as we saw with Helene, horribly damaging, um, just absolutely just ca ca catastrophic damage from the storm surge here in the panhandle of Florida. And then what has happened in the Southern right. Appalachians in the last 24 yeah. hours in Eastern Tennessee and Western North Carolina, they, they will be recovering for years in that yeah. area. The amount of roads washed out, I mean, entire towns, entire yeah. homes, entire buildings just washed away up there. Yeah. Saw that one image of that very small town, pretty much on one side of the, uh, of the road there but then the the uh you know the before and after image the town was there and then it wasn't and the road looked like a river instead of a road just incredible horrifying images and uh jeff talking about um you know uh, when we talk about storms tracking over where other storms went you know hopefully this this next system will not follow that uh path of lean but uh you know upwelling comes up uh as a, a topic and i i would think you know, if, you know, the upwelling, of course, uh, can bring cooler water to the surface and change intensity and things like that. But I would think enough time would transpire for that, that surface, sea surface temperature to warm back up should this next system track over that same general path as Helene. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, you know, you can look at the sea surface temperatures and there's definitely a cold water wake um, behind Helene. It's, it's relatively narrow. Um, in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, you know, Helene, Helene did have a big wind field, but you also have to remember the water temperatures were so hot yeah. um, that Helene just kind of knocked them back down towards average. And I, I do think whatever comes out of this area down here is probably going to end up a little bit further to the west on the track. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little bit early now to kind of speculate on that. But I, the Gulf of Mexico is still very capable of producing... Yes. Um, you know, it's warm enough, I guess I should say, to produce, you know, tropical storms and hurricanes. The bigger question with this system is how are the upper level winds look, uh, looking and how much dry air comes down from the continental United States? You know, I mean, we're like this morning, we're mid 50, low 50 degree dew points here in Southeast Texas. Yep. That's funneling off the coast. And the combination of that with potentially a little bit stronger upper level winds this time, uh, could really keep this in check, even though those sea surface temperatures are still relatively warm in the Gulf of Mexico. So again, the the models are not super aggressive with this, like they were with Helene. That was big red flags with Helene. Her, yeah. her Helene is what I'm trying Helene. to say. Yes. Helene. Helene. Yeah. And I, I was I was mixing Helene and Hermine together there for a second. <laughs> and I think this is, you know, we're not seeing that right now. So that tends to show that the upper levels and, and maybe the um, the moisture field is not going to be as good this time in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, you know, again, this is five, six, seven days out. Things can change. You, you got to stay on top of it if you're in the Gulf Coast from Louisiana over towards Florida. Again, I don't think this is a Texas threat. I think for the most for the for most of Texas, this season's done. Uh, once you start getting fronts like what we're getting now through here. 
uh, it's just really hard to get a tropical system in the Western Gulf, Northwestern Gulf, unless it forms, you know, over here, right along the coast of Mexico. And even here, this would tend to turn off to the Northeast. So yeah. I think we're looking pretty good here. You know, the, the biggest question probably locally most of us are facing is how can we get some rain around here um, yeah. that, that doesn't involve a, a tropical storm or hurricane because it's been relatively dry for the month of September. Yeah, and I, I don't really see anything on the horizon until maybe next Friday. There's an, Even at that, it's 20%. I mean, this last front, you know, the first one, the uh, moisture came back uh, relatively quickly. But this, you know, those dew points is, are staying down there for several days. And even though the, the high temperature feels like August, you know, mid-90s, at least the drier air certainly makes it feel better at night. So, um, but yeah, the bottom line with this system in the Caribbean is uh, uncertainty. I mean, we have some idea, but uncertainty means uh, staying touched with the latest changes. You can do that right here on Weather Insights. Make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. Also check out our blog on our Weather Insights uh, website. Um, just click on the blog and get the latest. We have uh, don't always um, have the same thing going on with YouTube as we do with the blog. The blog will, will have some additional information too. So both sources are a great place to keep up to date with the tropics. Jeff, thank you very much.